real southern woman. Um, I think some of you guys probably saw my post earlier. So you know what we're um where we are in my room that I fixed for my uh to remember my mama by. It's actually gonna be my new prayer room, study room. And the cool thing about this room is that it has all mama's stuff in it from her room at the memory care home. And the bed raises and lowers. It's something we bought mama years ago from Amazon. It has a base on it that actually raises and lowers and it has a lounge setting. So you can get in the bed and actually lounge. It's really nice because the, the top will raise up and your legs will come up. Anyway, I may do a few of my studies up like that with you guys too. Um, so tonight, it was the craziest thing how this happened, but um, our Bible study tonight is just perfect because I actually put this room together today and I did not read the Bible study before I put the room together today. So I'm just amazed at what the Bible study is about. So, and that's uh, in our Jesus, Our Perfect Hope by Charles Stanley book. And of course, we're reading today is July the 1st. Um, I'm going to turn right quick to that while, I'm, while several, several of you guys are getting on here. And then I'm also going to um, turn in my Bible to a couple of the scripture that it calls out. Um, and if you want to turn with me, the first section it's going to read about is in John. It's actually going to reference two places in John. Um, and so I'm going to flip over there right quick and get my Bible open. And uh, we'll do this together. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is the third um, chapter in the New Testament. And we're going, let's see, the first verse is going to be John 11. So, I'm going to flip to that right quick. Then I also have something just to kind of back, back up what we're going to talk about tonight. I told you I got a new study book when I was at a thrift store down in Pensacola. It is a very deep study book. It's really too, too deep for me to really use a lot um, because it's so many facts. And I am not a girl that remembers factual history type information. I'm just not. Um, unless it's tied to a story or something, it's hard for me to remember. But this I found down there. And now remember, this is backwards because we're on selfie mode. But this is called Know the Bible in 30 Days. And you know, I have one that I absolutely love that's back by Max Anders, I believe is his name. But this one that was done by Guideposts, and the guy's name is Stephen Lang. And I personally, I'm not that, you know, I, I personally wouldn't recommend it unless you're some type of, um, unless you're in the ministry some type of way to where you're actually in theology or you, you're like a pastor then, yes, I would re recommend this. But for just uh, little old me, I'm just going to touch the highlights in the back where it has some subject matter, okay? Um, I actually went through this whole thing on the subject that we're talking about tonight and kind of flipped through because this thing follows the Bible from front to back. There was absolutely nothing in his commentary part um, about what we're going to talk about tonight. So, um I did find some, some backup scripture in the back, so we're going to go through that. So anyway, this room, of course, is um, all about mama. Uh, one side of the room is actually really kind of crazy because it's May's uh, stuff that she actually left in the room. And I told her that I wanted this room for when she goes to college because she has two rooms upstairs. So she is just going to use her bedroom from now on. So this room um, actually has May's art and um art like her table where she does her art and it also has her snake she does have a snake and she is a she is a a sand boa maybe i'll get her out once y'all see her but she's really growing and i really think she's kind of hungry so um she might try to strike at me tonight if i try to get her out because she is so hungry she never gets out in the top of the cage unless she's really hungry I am not scared of snakes at all, not in the wild or anything. I'm just not. Um, now, as far as poisonous snakes, of course, I'm not crazy enough to pick one up, uh, but I would pick up a rat snake in a heartbeat minute. That's just how I am, y'all. I think it's fun. My goodness, they, they, they slither around on their bellies, and they don't even have feet. 
thanks to the good Lord. And I don't know why everybody's so doggone scared of them. But anyway, with that said, I'm very scared of spiders because they have way too many legs for me. They're creepy, crawly, and very spooky to me. So I guess I'm just an old country girl that doesn't mop a snake really don't bother me that much, and neither does a mouse, really. But now, <clears throat> spiders, I am not that crazy about. So I'm going to show you around the room a little bit just because um, I'm hoping this is really like the beginnings of Bible study again with me. I've been through a lot of life changes <laughs> lately, um, um, so I think I am ready to start um, coming on more regular with you guys for Bible study. Um, and you know that for a long time I was very sick and that took up my time. Um, and then we had graduation and then of course we had prom and, and then, uh, mama passed away and, um, we had to move her out and we just been doing a lot, lot of stuff. So I really, and, and now of all times, the actual television show that we're on is airing, but I really don't even care about that so much maybe y'all see my sweet side on here because i'm not the sweetest thing on that show i'll just go ahead and tell you it was a tv show and i'm real and so um uh, there was lots of it parts of it i, I didn't really gee haw with i loved meeting the people um but some of it was a little bit hard for me i will say physically and mentally because it's a different world out there y'all um i and in the corner of Mama's room, she actually had this um, in her room. All this stuff I actually bought and decorated her room with uh, over time. And I remember when my best friend's mother passed away and she wanted to keep some of her mama's stuff. I thought that was so weird. And I really did, y'all. I'm going to be real with you. I did. I thought it was weird. I thought it was, I'm going to be real with you. You don't think I'm ugly? But I thought she was trying to hang on to things that she shouldn't try to hang on to. Um, now my, but I will say my friend does suffer for, from some depression and, um, does have some things like that going on. And so I was worried about her, you know, hanging on to things and how she would, uh, react to it and that kind of thing. Um, I've only had one really hard night since mama passed away and I don't think that's bad considering and I actually came in this room, and that's before I had it. I just decorated it today. So I laid on her bed, and I enjoyed the fact that I had her bed here uh, to lay down on and think about her. And so I am realizing that you really never know how you're going to feel, what you're going to be like, until you've lived it. Um, it is so easy for us to have opinions on others, the way they raise their children, the decisions they make, the way they deal with mourning, or the way they deal with um, love and life in general, but in, in especially like a very uh, hard um, bridge to cross with with um, physical things. But the older we get, the more we do go through some of those things, and it's then we can actually uh, see from our firsthand experience what things are actually like. But until you've been through those types of things, you'll never really know um, what it's like, just like with mama, you know. Um, so I pick, I, I actually, uh, most all of this stuff is mama's. This was her favorite robe. And mama always liked tiger and leopard, anything. This thing is so soft. She actually had two of them. And she got two for Christmas one year from the kids. It was so weird because I had bought her one and then my, my sister-in-law, my oldest brother's wife, Anita, bought her the same exact robe, and I didn't get rid of them because they're so soft and so pretty. And so now I'm actually going to keep one. And um, I was thinking about giving, there was a lady that was so close to Mama there where she lived, and she took care of Mama almost every day. Her name was Jane, and I'm thinking about giving her one. I'm, I'm getting a couple of things together for her because I know that uh, she'll take good care of them. And she was really close to Mama. I mean, whenever they're in a setting like that, lots of times the workers that are around them every day are are just as close as you are because they spend a lot of hours with them. Uh, so I'm going to show you around the room a little bit, and then we're going to start our study. I know tonight's a little longer than normally. Usually when I do a Bible study, it doesn't take this long. But I want you all to see a couple of things. Well, let me just turn this around so I can zoom in. Okay, this is 
Let's see. This, I used to have these in my bedroom, and then I had interior decorator come in, and she said, honey, why do you have pictures of you and your babies in your bedroom? And I said, because they're beautiful, and I love my babies. And she said, you cannot, that's me and May, my firstborn. And then she said, this is me and Amy, my secondborn. And she said, you cannot do that. Your husband needs to see you as his wife, the woman he married, and sexy in the bedroom. And I know, you know, this is Bible study, but it's real. It's real life. So um, I actually, and there's a picture of my mom. And my mama absolutely loved butterflies. So I've got her little butterfly thing that I actually bought for her room that, you know, is like a little plug-in. So just a few things in here that remind me of her. But with that said, the interior decorator did say um, that we shouldn't have those types of pictures in our bedroom. That our bedroom should be, so if you're a woman and you've done that, she said our bedroom should be a place for us as a couple. And it should be maybe some young pictures of me, maybe even our wedding photo, but no children because it should be a setting where a man and woman are intimate together. She said candles, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And so I pulled these off my walls and they have not been back on the wall since. And so I thought, what a better place to put them than in my prayer room because where do you, who should you pray the most for? Your children? right? So um, I think that there will be a good reminder for me in my prayer room and a blessing for me in here and to the kids that, I mean, they don't even know what a blessing they're receiving because I'll be praying for them. So um, with that said, I hope you've learned something about decorating your bedroom and I hope that you like my prayer area. I really need this area now that Chris has retired. I never really get a minute by myself between him and the kids and so I really think I'm going to thoroughly enjoy this room. I am going to raise up my bed in that lounging position and I'm going to study the Word of God and I hope and pray that His peace and His love can um, make my life more abundant and make me a, a better person in general because there's nothing good about any of us according to the Bible. There's not one good, no not one. And the only thing good that we have, even close to being good, is the fact that Jesus Christ lives inside of us. And so tonight's Bible study, you're not going to believe it. After I set this room up today, and I thought this was going to be like the first time we came back on in the room, today our Bible study is called Have Hope. And it says, do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And this is about death, y'all. Of all things, that I've lost my mother, and now we're back in this room that I've decorated up for my prayer room, and the lesson is about her dying for me. And for you, it could be about somebody else dying, but is God good, or is God good, or is God great? You know what I mean? I mean, he just never quits showing out for me when I just take the time out for him. So it says, there is nothing that tests our faith like losing someone we love. I remember, this is Charles Stanley talking. He says, I remember the day we buried my mother. And what shocked me the most were the thoughts of uncertainty that entered my mind. Suppose there's no resurrection. And suppose this is the very last time I will ever see my mama. These doubts lasted just long enough for me to truly feel their devastating effect. And then all of a sudden, scripture verse after scripture verse kept coming to my mind, confirming Jesus' promises about the resurrection and eternal life. Now, this man is a pastor, but even a pastor can have doubts and worries when they're losing somebody that they're that close to the fact that you think you might never but i want to be honest with y'all and i ain't trying to be act like miss goody goody or nothing but it never even crossed my mind that i wouldn't see my mother again in heaven now i've told y'all that i don't necessarily believe that i'll know her like i knew her here and only god knows that and only i'll know that when i get there and i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or anything else because none of us really know 
but I will say that she'll be there, and I'll be there too, and that's all that matters, right? Um, so I'm going to read a couple of these scripture, and then I'll finish the Bible lesson, but I thought this is just amazing for tonight for me, um, and I hope it helps some of you. I know some of you have lost your husband lately, um, and some of you have lost your mothers lately. As a matter of fact, um, I'll go ahead and tell you we have a PA where I go to the doctor's office, and her name is Lindy Romulus. I think I'm saying it right. She's been there six years, y'all. She was in her, I would say, early 30s. I don't know absolutely for sure. But she and her husband and, and three children go down near Destin, Florida, every year for a medical conference. Now, this lady with her husband and three children, she had three boys. One was, I, th I want to one is about three years old, one was eight years old, about to turn nine, and one was 11. And they were hit head-on by an 18-year-old driver who was killed on impact. It killed her and her eight-year-old son. Now, this is a family heading to Florida. They do it every year and make a vacation out of this conference. And her life and her middle son's life were taken in an instant, in a flash. It is horrible. So if you think you've had a bad day today, think of think of that poor family. And the man was in ICU and he had punctured lungs and broken ribs, but he was able to make it to the funeral. So that was a blessing for him and his children and it was a celebration of life from what I hear, but it was awfully sad. So I, I want to tell you that just because no matter who we are and no matter where we are in our life, we are not guaranteed the next breath in this life. And we need to look at every day. In, um, for one, we need hope. Okay, that's what this is about. Have hope. And it says, do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Because there's people out there that don't have the hope that we have in an eternal life. Now, I'm going to read a couple of these scriptures, and they're beautiful scriptures, thinking about, and I do know that at my doctor's office, now, I don't know that everybody there is saved, but I do know at both of their offices, they play Christian music 24-7, okay? So, I'm hoping and praying, surely to goodness, it sounds like she was saved and, and going to heaven, okay? So let's read John 11, verses 25 and 26. And that will be, let's see. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may, though he may die, he shall live. Let me read it again. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into this world. Okay, is that not beautiful? Now, what I love about Jesus is that he gave us these promises and these glimmers of hope that we can look at each and every day if we if we feel down or if we lose somebody. It is just a blessing. Now we have got we'll also read John 26 in no, I'm sorry, John chapter 14, 1 through 3. So we're just gonna flip over a couple of pages and let's read what he says here. He, this is when he this is the famous I am the way the truth and the life okay so he says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare uh, and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. So, he's letting us know he's going to prepare a place for us. He's letting us know that where he is, 
he wants us to be there too with him, which is a wonderful blessing. I actually, um, I think I referenced that. I didn't have the scripture written down, but I referenced that um, a few a few nights ago when I did my study. And he also says, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And that's because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, okay? So uh, those are just beautiful verses, and both of those are in John. And then there's one more. It's in 1 Corinthians, and we don't want to leave it out because it's a, it's a nice little nugget. And so we're going we're gonna to flip to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it is 54 through 57. And this is what, let's see, 1 Corinthians 54. Our final victory is the, is the thing at the top. And then it says, So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall... Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, which is hell, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So um, those three readings out of the Bible shows those very strong and real promises that God has given us as his children that we will never die. We just move on to the next life with him because he told his father plainly that where he was, he wanted us to be. And that's a true blessing. Um, so the rest of our Bible study says, that was a powerful moment. I'll never forget it. Do I really believe there was a resurrection for those who believe in Christ? Yes. Do I have faith that I would see Mama again? Yes. And did I truly have confidence that we would be together again and that I would dwell with her in the presence of God for eternity? He says, yes, yes, yes. Whenever you experience a loss, it is good to review what you believe as well. Find comfort in who Christ is and what he has promised you. Do not grieve as a helpless person. With Jesus, you always have hope. Jesus, thank you for giving me hope, comfort, and assurance, even in my worst losses. Amen. Now, I don't think he means that we're not supposed to grieve. I just think he means that when we do grieve, we don't grieve because we feel like our parents are out there somewhere else and we don't know where they are and we feel scared. He's letting us know that it's fine to grieve because we love them and we miss them. But we do have the hope, which makes it so much better. For me, I mean, it, it makes all the difference in the world for me. And every once in a while, I'll miss my mama and I'll cry or I'll think about something and like, when they showed us on the TV show Thursday night, um, they show a clip of Mama on the wall, and it brought tears to my eyes because the reality of her being gone is kind of slaps you in the face in times like those. When I was there doing that show, Mama was in bad shape, and I felt a little guilty from being away from her. Um, but, and I, I kind of doubt that that show means anything up there in heaven. You know what I mean? Because it's TV and it's Hollywood. Uh, but I do know that Mama's proud of me, and I'm sure that God and Mama are proud of me more for doing a Bible study any day than cooking and having a TV, you know, being on a TV show. Because that's what matters, y'all. What matters is if we spread the word of the Lord, if we show people that our life can be more abundant through Jesus Christ. That's what matters um, to me more than anything. And that's why I do my show. And that's why I do not um, sugarcoat it either, you know. Um, so I'm hoping that y'all enjoyed the Bible study tonight. Now, in this other book, there were a couple of verses, and I'm going to read them fast. And they're just about eternal life. 
just to show you that, you know, just different places. And it says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's out of Psalms. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. That's what we read earlier. As in Adam, all die. So in Christ, all will be made alive. I like that one because it takes you back to the Old Testament to show you who brought sin into the world. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. I'm going to read it again. As in, I, as in Adam, all die. In Christ, all will be made alive. Our citizenship is in heaven, as out of Philippians. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. That is in 1 John. And the last one's out of Revelation. And it is, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Okay? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. That's my mama. Blessed, she's dead, but she's died, she died in the Lord. So really, she she lives. Because according to Jesus Christ, to, to, to die is to live, okay? In a wonderful place, much better than here on the earth. I think he puts us here just to, um, well, for one, we're his creation, okay? And he is our creator. And he puts us here so that we can spread his joy, his love, and his word. Um, and we can shine a light for him. And, and that's really what we're here for, y'all. So if we're not doing it, you know, we need to be really careful because what good are we really here anyway for him? And he can take us out anytime he wants to, you know. Um, and so remember that. Um, but anyway, I trust in the Lord every day and I trust him. I think he's in control of everything in my life. And I think he's in control of this world. I believe just like, I did when I was a little girl, and we when we sang the song, He's got the whole world in his hands. I believe he does, and I believe we should respect the authorities around us, just like the Bible tells us to. I think we should respect the government. I think we should respect who's in office, because whether we want to believe it or not, God is in control, and he puts in there for a reason, whether it be good or bad, or whatever the reason may be. We still have to believe that God is truly in control, okay? Um, and just like with that show, I worry about what they're going to make me look like or whatever. But in all reality, God is in control. Even if those people who cut the film and edited it are not Christians, he can make them do things. I mean, I know he can because he's God. So I'm not going to worry about it too much because all those, um, I, I just, I think he blesses me fine, you know, and I'm, I was blessed just to go, get to go out there. So even if I got hurt at the hospital, not the hospital, even if I got hurt on the way out and I went in the best of moods, there's a reason for all of that. And we got to, we got to talk to people about God while we were out there. There was actually a fire, one of the big fires that was spreading, um, that was very dangerous. Um, there was also a shooting in a country bar while we were there. And one of the little girls who drove the vans around had a friend whose brother was in there and got killed. And so me and my brother, two families that were on set um, that wanted to pray, I actually asked them, would they like to, uh, would they like to come out and pray with her? Because she said she would like it. And we got to go out and pray with her. So God uses you wherever you are. Only if you let him though. Okay. So um, it was a long study. But I hope y'all have enjoyed it. I missed you. And I will, um, I'll be on here as much as I can. I don't know if I'll make it every single night. I know I don't normally do it on the weekend. But um, y'all will see me when you see me. So when I come on. I'm going to try to do it around 9 o'clock. I think it's a good time. Those of you that have smaller kids can, you know, get them in the bed a little early, maybe. And um, I know that Eastern time is um, nine, but everybody else is behind. So I'm hoping it works out good. Um, let's say our prayers and thanks for joining us tonight. And God is so good to give us such a beautiful message on the day that we fix my mom's uh, remembrance room and start our Bible studies again together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for each and every one of those who have joined in tonight. 
each and every one of us who love you and who have accepted your son as our personal savior, who know that there is a hope after this life. And we know that's what keeps us going and pushing forward. We pray for all the families that have been affected by someone who has passed away, whether it be a mother, a husband, a child, no matter who it is, Lord, we know that you, only you can comfort the hearts of us as children as God, of God. And I pray, Lord, that you would just um, help us with that um, and help us know that you are in control of our life. Help us make a point to take a minute to let you speak to us through your word. And I pray that these pictures in this room will help remind me to pray for my children. Um, thank you. I love you. Amen. I hope you have a good night. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's Bible study. And we will see you tomorrow talking about the July the 2nd. If you, if you haven't been a part of the Bible study and you want to get a devotional, um, they do have them on the Kindle Virgin, 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 the Kindle Virgin, which is much cheaper. If you want to read it on Amazon, on your laptop or on your telephone, you can download the Kindle Amazon app, get this book a lot cheaper. And it's Jesus, Our Perfect Hope by Charles F. Stanley. And I'm a stickler one. And I know there's a lady even on here that is a pastor, but I, I like to be taught by, um, a man of God, I just do, and Charles Stanley to me is a is a really good teacher. Not saying that you can't be taught by a woman. I think women can teach women all day long, but um, I just believe in a, a, a divine order: first God, then the man, then the woman, and that's just how I believe, and I can believe that way because that's just my belief. Uh, but don't hate me for it, you know. Um, Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. I love you. Bye.